Good evening, and welcome to worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Good evening, oh boy. What side of the bed did I get up on? The wrong side. Good morning. And welcome to worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I have a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, unfortunate in the times we live in, uh, there's a lot of unfortunate things that happen uh, through emails or texting or over the internet. And this week I was informed that were several people apparently got a text. I know of at least five people um, that got a text asking and soliciting for money from the church and basically saying that I was the one that was trying to solicitate uh, people to get some gift certificates to help some people and did anybody get anything like that? Okay. Oh wait, I found out about you guys. Uh, but I, there was like five people from the church. If you happen to ever get anything like that, I would never send a text or an email. Uh, please. Uh, unfortunate, it's becoming so common. I know a few people that uh, in our congregation, unfortunately, that were scammed. Um, please do not respond to those without talking to the person who supposedly sent it to you uh, to be 100% sure. But anyways, if you receive anything through email or, or um, or texting from me or from the church, disregard it, please, uh, and let us know. We call the police, but unfortunately, there's so many of these cases, there isn't a lot they can do. Uh, but I'm glad none of you got any of those uh, texts. Also, uh, next Saturday, this will be the second time we've done a blessing of the pets. Uh, it will be done on the front lawn, weather permitting. From 10 to 11 next Saturday, if it rains, we'll still bless the, uh, the pets under the portico. So that's happening next Saturday from 10 to 11. Are there any other announcements for the life of the church? Seeing none, uh, we have an honored guest with us, uh, Chris Parker from one we youth in Family Treatment Center. So at this time, uh, we've always supported uh, this great ministry. So I'm going to have Chris come up and share a few moments about the ministry. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor. Thank all of you uh, for having me this morning. Uh, I promise I will not talk long, and that is because as a very young boy sitting next to my father in church on Sunday, there was a missionary going up to speak, and I heard my dad say to no one in particular, if this guy talks too long, I'm not giving him anything. So, <laughs> anyway, I will not talk long. Um, the 141 years of Wormley, there have been wonderful uh, corporate and donor sponsors along the way, but one thing that has remained steadfast is the Lutheran Church. Side by side, 141 years, and so I think we should be proud of that collectively because that's a, that's a long run. I mean, you talk about through two world wars and, and Korea and Vietnam and 1918 and Spain. I mean, everything, and the Lutheran Church has backed Wormley the whole way. I think that's a pretty big deal. Uh, uh, just to remind you of the population that we serve, I would like to tell you a quick story. I went with our, before this all started, where we kind of got locked down, I went with Norm, our admissions director, to interview a little boy, because sometimes you have to uh, go and see if uh, they're right for Warnley or if Warnley is right for them. So Norm hands me his uh, file as we're driving, and we've got about an hour drive. I've got plenty of time to read it. And if you read this file about what this kid had done, um, you, would have, you would not even want to go into a room with him. And I guess the point of me telling this story is to remind you that the kids are there not because of uh, 
not necessarily what they've done, but what's been done to them to cause them to do what they've done. So anyway, Norm and I are thinking, after I read his file, and obviously he's already read it, should we even be in the room alone with this kid? And, and, but we decided. So we go in, he's four foot tall, he's 11 years old, he's about the nicest looking little boy you've ever seen in your life. He comes in with his head down like a beat dog, and uh, he sits down. So Norm has been doing this for a long time. He gently eases into talking to him. And he asked him, you know, what's your favorite thing to do? And he says fishing. And boy, we talked about fishing forever. He was kind of obsessed with it. And he went on asking some other questions. And in my mind, I'm thinking, how is this little boy here? I don't get it. And I remember looking at his legal guardian in his notes. You know, it was the state of Indiana. That's his parents, the state. Anyway, he went on and asked him some other questions, and he said, what's, uh, you know, what's your favorite TV show? And the little guy said, Top Hooker. And Norm said, who would let you watch something like that? And he said, it's a fishing show, and we were so relieved that that's what it was. Anyway, it was, my heart was broken, it really was. And I told my wife later, I, I would have brought him home with me right then, but that's not how it worked. We get back in the car and we got on, uh, on the phone with Child Protection and they explained to us he had been removed from his home because his mother and his grandfather regularly physically abused him as in beating him and they would leave and they would lock him in a room, a dark room, for days at a time with nothing but a bowl of dog food. He was removed by the courts and put with a short-term foster family and that's where he learned to fish. They, the property went right along the street that they were fishing, and the older boys taught him how to fish there. Well, it was only short term, so he was moved to another foster home, took his fishing pole with him. One of the other kids broke his fishing pole, which he was obsessed with fishing, as we know, and he went berserk. And the kid blamed it on him, on the little guy. He went berserk. So what did the family do to teach him a lesson? They all went fishing and made him sit and watch him do it. All right, so he was uh, on the way home. He was just beside himself, and he took off. He ran out of the car in traffic down the street. They caught up with him, grabbed him, took him to the police station, and said, we're done, just done. So now we're talking to him. And I, I'm just thinking, how did this happen, you know? But uh, he, he is at Wernerly now, and, and he's getting better, but it's a long road back for this little guy. But he's getting better because of folks like you and your kindness and generosity. I know there's not a lot of fellowship uh, after church, so feel free to call me anytime at Wernerly if there's anything you think you'd like to do for us or that we can answer questions about. And uh, God bless you, and thank you so much for the time this morning. Thank you, Chris, for that heartfelt story. Uh, there is some additional information out back, right? And uh, if you, uh, if your heart is so called, uh, we're always uh, supporting that great ministry. Uh, so the information is out back on that table. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prayer.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Benevolent God, O oh God, our defender, storms rage around you and us. Cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us in faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
which is the word of the Lord. Devoting their time. 
time of their heart to God's Word. These faithful women encountered a Bible study recently that shared about what it means to call on the name of the Lord. How appropriate today because in Romans, the same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This scripture from Romans cries out that as people of faith, we are called to call on the name of the Lord in all we do. So first things first, thank you to those women out there that provided the gateway to our message today, that we were engaged in God's Word, in God's Word daily during COVID-19. I encourage you to stay connected in this new virtual world. We can do it the old way, or we can do it in a different way, as these women are doing. But COVID-19 has changed the church. The church is not going to go back to the way it was. Unfortunate, maybe, but maybe it's a good thing. And I believe one of the keys to thriving at Zion now and in the future, how did the church start? Big groups? Small. In homes. We can still do that today. We just can't meet in these big crowds. So I think one of the key things God's calling us to is back to our originality. Where faith started in small groups, just like these women are doing. Small groups in our homes are small groups. Anyway, we can form them. There are many today, maybe in a different way, on the virtual world, on the internet, such as the women's Bible group, as they continue to serve Christ through serving others. So I encourage the people of Zion in this new world we're in, this new reality, if you have an idea, just share it with somebody. Because that's how the church works. So we can stay connected, serving Christ through serving others, living out our faith. Well, this pandemic, COVID-19, is a crisis, and it has accelerated the church into the future, into the now. Thank you, ladies of Zion, for providing the insight and word for today. Lord, as they have accelerated our faith in the present reality that we're living in. But now, what does it mean to call on the name of the Lord? Well, usually when we pray, who do we pray? In whose name? Starts with the J. Jesus, right? At the end of many prayers, we go, in. Hey, but what does that mean? You know, we do it so matter-of-factly, right? No, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. What does it mean to call on the Lord? Well, do we need to call on the Lord daily today? Anybody give me an amen? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So many prayers that we can offer up as God's people. And when we do it, we say at the end, in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. You know, at the end of the prayer, we do not say a prayer petition and say that, I'm going to pick on Lori today because I never pick on her, so today's your day. But, you know, if Lori was saying a prayer, we wouldn't end his hand. And Lori says, we don't pray in Lori's name. We don't pray in Sally's name or Sue and Becky. When we pray in the name of Jesus, we take on an identity 
and we're one of His. We have a new identity by saying, in the name of Jesus, or in the name of the Lord. When we say in Jesus' name, we are proclaiming that we firmly believe and have faith in this new identity. And now we're fully invested, not only in glory or pastor power, but in Jesus' power. When we exclaim and call in the name of the Lord, not only are we just hopefully just not uttering words that are inward in nature, but also believe that we are called to live a life where our words, the inward faith and belief in Jesus, match our outward ways, our acts, to have faith in this new identity that Jesus is powering us and we're not being empowered by humanists of silly and salad or frank power. Calling on the name of Jesus propels us inward and outward. Our faith in Jesus is our new identity and calling on the name of Jesus hopefully changes us inward and outward. Calling on the name of Jesus can be life-changing when we are committed to our faith in our Savior. So, uh, I'm going to end with this. The scripture from Romans asks a question. So what does it say here? We'll look what it says at the end. Oof. See, verse... But how are they, verse 14, but how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? You know when you say, I pray in Jesus' name, you're also being commissioned to go out spread the news. To help our neighbors who many times don't really understand who Jesus really is. They just hear something on the internet or something and don't really understand that Jesus is all about love and forgiveness and grace. When we call in the name of Jesus, you pick up a commissioning to go and tell others the good news of Jesus. And that good news is that Jesus fulfilled the law. It is the end of legalism. And the new kingdom has begun the reigning love of our Savior. The death and resurrection of Jesus changes everything now and forever. We can call on the name of Jesus outward and inward and become propelled by Jesus' power, not just the human power of Mary Sue, Joyce, Jackie, Jeff, Kirby, and Bob. Many times, the world does not understand who Jesus really is. Jesus implores, implores us to go and be a blessing to our neighbors with the loving power of our Lord and Savior. And that text, the end of Romans, the last thing it leaves us with, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those Not open. The text from Romans informs us what it means to call on the name of the Lord. And it changes everything about us as followers and believers of Jesus. And to hopefully have faith when we call on Jesus to believe that we are not only powered by human influence, but we are powered by Jesus onto another plane and our identity changes. That is not from this world. We are fueled and powered by the one who rose from the dead and saves. May we all believe and have faith in our hearts that we call on the name of Jesus. We believe in the Jesus power that lives inside and outside of us. That is what it means to call on the name of the Lord. To call on the name of Jesus in all of us. And to go to the world and serve Him 
as it is written. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring his good news. And all God's people said, Help the 
human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand, Lord, in your mercy. For the nations and their leaders, in you steadfast love and faithfulness be, and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice, and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need, everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany all who are lonely, hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish, and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day. At this time, we now pray for all those we name silently or loud at this time. Tom and Alice Replogo, Raymond Michael Stoner Jr., Larry and Will Nichols, Sophia Yarwick, Fred and Jan Eller, Trapper Phillips, Carol Phillips, Carolyn Oates, Irene Watson, Paul and Jill Newson, Mike and Mason Turbin, Kyle Watkins, Norm and Marianne Barner, Jason Weber, Laura Rowe, Brian Siebold, Edward Siebold and family, Jean Colgrove, Larry and Mary Hoover, Betsy Mason, Dave and Sandy Kothman, Laura Barnes, Elise, Alyssa Spencer, and Little Baby Riley, Mark Clary, Ina Crenshaw, Sue and Mike Melody, Leah Tatum, Hap Johnson, Philip Nemeth, David Bob, Jake Sipke, Gail Ball, Becky Ely, and my cousin Dan Van Campbell and his family, as all of them have COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, for our congregation, you have gathered us here today as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardships. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together, Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself, Lord, in your mercy. In a certain hope that nothing can separate us from your law, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and all God's people said, Amen. Normally at this time we would have the offertory uh, plate being passed. Uh, we are not doing that now. If you uh, still have not given up your offering, the offering plate is in the back. <laughs> In the night in which you 
was betrayed, O Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he gave, the, he gave thanks and gave the cup, saying, This is the new covenant of my body and blood shed for you. And for the forgiveness of all people. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in the words our Savior taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not a temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thy is the kingdom
celebrating communion uh, this morning. Uh, right after I give the dismissal, Lori will play a piece uh, as the postlude. Please remain in your seats until the postlude is done while we are preparing for communion. Communion will be outside. Uh, also, uh, we'll start in the back. Keep your social distancing and just walk out and go outside of the same doors you came in. You'll receive a Dixie cup. You can either have wine or grape juice. If you prefer the grape juice, let me know. Uh, and there'll be a wafer on top. And that is the body and blood of Christ shed for you. What is the mission of Zion Lutheran Church? 